Okay, on the, on the back of the car, which you can't see right now, there's a fuel cell, aluminum fuel cell. It took about seven months to make it the way we wanted it. It's mounted in the back of the car between the frame rails. The fuel cell holds 34 gallons. Mm -hmm. And it's designed so that when it gets low to it doesn't cavitate. It's also designed that the fuel that's pulling from a mechanical fuel pump that pumps the fuel to the front of the motor doesn't create a, a vortice or a kind of a tornado swirl in the fuel as it gets low. So the fuel is pulled from a pickup and pulled from three different directions like this. Mm -hmm. So one, two, and three, so that it can't pull and create that funnel. The fuel is pumped, it's vented with a large vent. We made a custom rollover valve in the top. You can't buy them big enough. This is a uh, real large uh, Dash 10 custom made, bought a stainless steel ball and made it. So if it ever ended up on upside down, it would shut the fuel off. Fuel comes forward through the frame rails in the car up to the front here. It's a mess right now, but uh, it comes right out of the frame rail right here, right here. So the fuel comes out of the frame rail up to this regulator. Regulate the fuel pressure down and then there's a line right here. Okay, mm -hmm. it goes there and then there's another fuel line here that comes Crosses. across and they both go into these holly float bowls. And then what happens is the holly float bowls regulate the fuel level in the front fuel cell. I have a sending unit in the front and I have a sending unit in the back and I use a toggle switch to flip between the two um, uh, sending units so that I know how much fuel I have in the rear and in the front for street driving it since we do a lot of it. Um, so far the floats in these ISPRO fuel senders have not held up to alcohol and they say they should so they're going to be researching that over the winter. To try to get that fixed they think they have a problem in the manufacturing but they're going to look into it right here is a uh, remote reservoir that i put gas on cool days or you can put alcohol in it to prime it but everybody seems to want to see us squirt the motor instead so we don't use it very often fuel was put in here the fuel gets pumped up here there's underneath here is a little fuel pump and that fuel pump pumps the fuel into a nitrous solenoid. On the control panel inside the car, I have a nitrous purge type button that I press. When I press it, it pumps fuel into a, um, a spring-loaded valve at the top of the blower um, with a ball in it and a spring in it that, sh that when the motor fires, the vacuum from the motor pulls the ball shut and closes it off. Otherwise, it would drain the fuel right out of here. Um, that's how that works. Now, once the fuel is pumped from the rear fuel cell to the front cell, and it's in the front cell, the motor uh, all runs off the front cell for gravity reasons. And here there's a very large fuel line that runs up to a um, fuel pump, uh, which you can see here. And it's a Rage fuel pump, and that's the fuel system runs off that. It's a mechanical fuel pump that runs off the camshaft in the front of the motor right here and that pumps the that pumps the fuel right here off this the pump sits here and pumps it up to the barrel valve which is on the front of the the uh, supercharger on the other side and it runs up into that barrel valve and then it pumps it back the barrel valve pumps the fuel back here to this distribution block. This distribution block pumps fuel to the carbon fiber injector hat fittings right here and pumps fuel to the back of the supercharger right here and it lubricates the supercharger. You put fuel on top, it cools it and it lubricates it. And it also helps then the supercharger Teflon strip seal better, makes more power. And we dump a lot of fuel on top and then you got to keep in mind when you first run and start the car the car is running on just this distribution block and these nozzles here there's no fuel coming out of this second distribution block okay that wise off here until the until it hits uh, nine pounds of pressure 
when it hits actually 10 pounds when it hits 10 pounds of fuel pressure this check valve right here opens up and fuel starts to go down into the manifold and inject through the nozzles here and you set these nozzles these are the only nozzles that you can adjust to get change your air fuel mixture in each cylinder otherwise there's no adjustment when the fuel comes in at idle through the main distribution block into the blower the blower puts it where it wants you have nothing to say about it it goes where it wants to go when it's down here now you can start tuning it when we ran it on the dyno at carcraft and won their dyno challenge uh, we had a super fat tune up in the car we were only overdriving it five percent it made 23 pounds of boost on the race pack computer um, with a super fat tune up we didn't even have any heat in the plugs um, this year we'll step it up a little bit we'll run more this year probably 20 over on the blower and try to get a little more it will make 40 pounds of boost at 20 over um, because the blower was modified by Darren Mayer who's a very popular uh, pro mod blower guy and then the front fuel cell too is uh, vented with a large vent it also has fittings in it already set up for bypasses for leaning the car out in the future right here where you can bypass even more fuel and we do have a fuel management system uh, by Darren Mayer to lean the car out even further if we want to do that um, I have kind of a trick barrel valve on this motor that's by Ralph or uh, Ralph Gore, Ralph and Spike Gore and that barrel valve if you notice the two nuts on that they have a um, idle circuit in the front and a stage circuit in the back stage is off idle and the front one's idle so we flow the fuel system by putting 100 pounds in the front of the barrel valve and blocking it off and we flow it and we can adjust that screw to change that um, but that changes your position of your barrel valve in the the, the barrel in the barrel valve but uh, anyway long story short works real well we're still dialing all that in it's going to take time we're dialing in slowly so we don't uh, hurt the motor and uh, therefore we've had pretty cold plugs we haven't even really gotten any heat in the plugs it's gone down to the ground down to the ground strap on most of them not quite all of them and we haven't even got any heat in the base of the plug yet so that of course just doing that alone is going to make a big difference in power and we're trying we've been leaning the motor out slowly to try to get it more responsive and get it where we want it uh, the motor will make 2500 horse uh, when everything's dialed in right but uh, no shortcuts everything's done right no Mickey Mouse no shortcuts on anything we've done